This payload bay, once again, will be the site of the big action uh, of the shuttle, this mission, the spacewalk by Joe Allen and Bill Lenore. Three and a half hours in the payload bay, going back and forth, doing a bunch of chores. Uh, those are some of the things that make this mission very different. When the first shuttle is deployed this afternoon, part of what's going to be happening is that the shuttle will be starting to pay for itself. Not quite on this mission. NASA taking in only something like $17 million. That's just a very tiny dent in the $250 million they say that SCS-5 is costing. But, um, and General Abramson, incidentally, has mentioned that they are in the loss leader part of the program. The idea, of course, is that ultimately the shuttle will be able to cover its expenses, the expenses, maybe make a little bit of a profit as it's launching satellites. This mission is also a bargain for Telesat of Canada and for the satellite business services, the people who are putting up those birds. Uh, they've got the uh, rates that will go up at more than double within a couple of years. So everybody seems to be doing pretty well, assuming everything gets launched okay. Again, uh, we will see the first satellite being deployed sometime later this afternoon, if all goes well. We do not expect to have live television coverage of that. But they will be taking pictures of it when they do it, and then those pictures will get transmitted back down here to Earth when they pass over a station where they can do that. Uh, and so we will, we will actually see it go up, and we will see the shuttle go into business, and we'll be here to show you all of that. Frank? Thank you, Lynn. Thank you very much. Well, we are 12 minutes and 30 seconds into the mission. At this uh, moment, Columbia is uh, more than 1,500 miles away from uh, Cape Canaveral, heading across the uh, coast of Africa. And it's uh, still on its first orbit. All is uh, going very well indeed. Lynn mentioned the, uh, well, before we do that, uh, I wanted to talk about the satellites. But uh, let's see the replay once again. And we'll see this replay as taken from one of the chase planes, actually up above. This is something you've, we've never seen before, as I can recall, anyway. Here is the actual launch as viewed from one of the uh, chase planes, NASA planes. That is a spectacular uh, ringside seat. I don't think I've ever seen this before. No, I noticed the blimp was in the area. The Goodyear <laughs> blimp in it. May, it may have been near this, this launch today. I don't think I'd want to be in a blimp with that uh, shock wave goes reverberating across the swamps here. It was a magnificent. The visibility today was unbelievable. I believe we could see that uh, vehicle as far as 300 miles away. Okay, let's see it from another angle now. Here we are right down at ground level. Watch the ignition of the powerful engines. You really get a feel for the surge. Yes, it just kind of disappears there in a cloud of steam, and already it's moving. Watch it come up out of that cloud now. There it goes. And that just wall of flame, stretching almost all the way down to the ground. Frank James Mishner uh, was viewing this launch today. I talked to him a little bit earlier, and I uh, would be very interested in his uh, feelings about this kind of thing. Uh, has he seen one before? He's written a book. I believe he has. Certainly, uh, certainly the Apollo launches, I'm not sure. I believe he's also seen a shuttle launch. But as I say, each one's sort of the first time. It is for you and I, I can tell you today. I was wondering if he had seen a shuttle launch, because they are different from the, uh, the kind of mission that you went on, you know, the, the Apollos. The Apollo looked like it had every right to go up. It looked like a rocket, you know. But this thing, with the two solid rocket boosters on the side and that big tank, and the uh, this actual spacecraft, which is also a space plane, just kind of nestled to it. You just wonder if it's ever going to get off the ground. One of the fifth time now. It's not gone well. Well, one of the exciting things, uh, you know, you even mentioned it before, is to watch it go up here on its tail, and a few days later, in other words, literally watch the same vehicle come in and make a landing is, uh, it, it's sort of a, a special kind of identity you have with that, uh, with that bird. And how. And this will be the uh, last uh, flight for uh, Columbia for a while. It'll uh, get a break. Columbia will actually, uh, let's see, when will the next flight of Columbia be? Well, next flight will be about, uh, about nine, about a year from now, yeah. next October. But there will be uh, other flights. Challenger, the second uh, of the uh, spacecraft, will be coming along for the next mission in January or February of next year. Our coverage of the Space Shuttle Columbia will continue in just a moment. <laughs> No, there is not a military payload aboard this time at all. Uh, they will fly about one-third of the time with us, but this is not one of those times. So the, the first satellite will be deployed some eight hours in, in the mission. Uh, what takes place between that period of time after the first satellite is deployed and the second satellite is deployed? There's about 24 hours 
between, and of course eight hours of that time will be a sleep period. The rest of the time the crew will be checking out the orbiter, making sure it's in good condition, and uh, getting ready to deploy that second satellite. That takes several hours, and so you're talking about most of the day right there. NASA and the astronauts did not seem to be concerned that there were no ejection seats in this spacecraft just in case something had something wrong had gone on had taken place well that's right uh, and of course the reason is that we have full confidence in the orbiter but uh, if you look at it in another way there is only room for two ejection seats and with four people aboard it would be considered rather unsporting for two of them to step overboard yes it would be thank you very much mr. Rob uh, that is Rocky Rob giving us the updated information from the Kennedy Space Center. Here we see the uh, actual tracking map. They're well over the coast of Africa now and uh, moving well along on their first orbit. The four astronauts would better identify them for you once again because they kind of get lost in the shuffle here. Vance Brand, the commander, and Colonel Robert Overmeyer is the pilot. Dr. Joseph Allen, a physicist, one of the mission specialists, is on board. And Dr. Bill Lenore, who uh, is a specialist in electrical engineering. All of them, except for uh, Vance Brand, rookies as far as space flight is concerned. Well, Gene, what are your impressions now after watching this for the fifth time? Well, like I said, I'm ready to enlist, uh, re-enlist, <laughs> Frank. You know, I just uh, had a thought here. Joe Allen, who was sort of in the back of the bus on his flight, there's only three seats up in a cockpit, and uh, Joe is in what they call a mid-deck, had no view. All he could do was feel and, uh, and think during his launch. I bet by now he's well, uh, well on his way up into the cockpit. Okay, thank you very much, Gene. It's, as always, it's been a pleasure working with you.